welcome back to another video and today we're going to talk about parametric modeling probably the most important thing you can ever learn for CAD this video is a continuation of the last one so if you haven't watched my free CAD for beginners video make sure you go check that out first and then come back to this one so what is parametric modeling well it's a powerful technique that you can integrate into your workflow and what I'll give you today is a visual demonstration of what it is why it's useful and why you should continue to use it in future designs. If you can implement this and you understand it, it's gonna save you so much time later on down the road, especially when you start designing really complex models. So let's get started and I'll show you how to use it. So this is where we left off in the last video. We created this kind of cube thing with a pocket in it and then we filtered the edges to make it look a bit nicer. And if you remember in that last video, I told you that you can easily make changes to your design just by coming up to your part tree and double clicking on the sketch. So if we go ahead and do that, you can see we're back into the sketch. We can see our constraints, our dimensions. I said that if you wanted to change one of these, you had to go in, double click it, and enter in a new value. And that can get quite time consuming and tedious over and over again. And wouldn't it be really cool if there was one place where we could just enter in a value and our whole design updates? That would be awesome. And that is basically what parametric modeling is. It's a way of creating your designs so that the design kind of adjusts to itself based on a number of parameters. So let's implement parametric modeling and you'll see exactly what I mean. So first of all, we need somewhere to put our parameters and we can do that inside of FreeCAD. So make sure that you close your sketcher. So we're gonna update, close. Now if we come up to the workbenches drop down here at the top, we wanna to click on spreadsheet. That takes us to a completely new workbench and we've got a bunch of new tools again at the top. Now if we come up to spreadsheet, click on create spreadsheet, Notice in our part tree here on the left, it adds a spreadsheet for us. We're gonna right click on that spreadsheet, rename, and we're gonna call this parameters. Once you've renamed the file, if you double click on that file parameters, it takes us to a little spreadsheet. And this is where we're gonna enter in all of our parameters. Let's go back to our sketch and have a look at exactly what dimensions we're gonna use and what parameters we're gonna need. So once again, we double click on our sketch, takes us straight back in and we can see in here we've got a square we've got a width and a length but remember we also have these other parameters here that help keep it central so what I'm going to do is go back to the spreadsheet just to let you know as well on the bottom of the application you've got this toolbar with a bunch of different tabs and instead of updating and closing and going back and forth all the time you can just click on these tabs and it quickly jumps you between the different workbenches so you can click on parameters and we're straight back in here so looking at this we're going to need two parameters length and width so what I'm gonna do, straight back into the parameters tab. In the cell A1, I'm gonna enter a name for the parameter, which is gonna be width. And we're gonna make that 50, because that's what we're using currently. So we just enter in 50. We have to right click on the cell that we've entered the value in and click on properties. Now, if we come to alias, this is where we're gonna to have to give the property a name. We've already put a name in the spreadsheet, but that's just for our reference. In order for FreeCAD to know about this property, you must give it an alias. So we're gonna put the same thing in here. We're gonna put width. If you click on the tab here, display unit, you can enter a value in here as well for whatever unit you're using. So I'm gonna just enter MM for millimeters, hit okay. And you can see now in our spreadsheet, the cell has turned yellow and we can see that we got a value of 50 and we're using units of millimeters. The other parameter we need is length. So once again, we double click on the cell. We're gonna enter in length, click on the cell in the next column. We're gonna enter another value in here for that parameter, which is gonna be 50. If we right click on the parameter properties, again, display unit, we're gonna use millimeters. And we need to give it an alias, which is gonna be length. Hit OK, and there we go. You can see that those have turned yellow, and that means they're active. So you can just click Update, then come back to our Sketch tab by clicking on the bottom here. So let's make use of those parameters. We need to now change these values we've got here to the aliases we gave for our parameters. So if we take the Width parameter here at the top, we're going to double click it. Here it asks us for a numerical length value, but we're not going to use that. There's a little button here that you can click over on the right, and that brings up a formula editor. Now in here, we can reference our spreadsheet. Remember we named our spreadsheet parameters. So if we start typing P, you'll see parameters is already in the dropdown. So if we come down to it, notice it's now changed to parameters dot, and this is where you put in the alias. So we want width, so we're gonna enter parameters dot width. I notice it's auto suggesting it for you because it kind of knows that's where you wanna pick. Choose width, 
And notice the result changes to 50 because it's referencing that value we gave it in the spreadsheet. So if we hit OK, notice that our dimension now has turned orange and that means it's referencing the spreadsheet. We're going to do the same here for the length. So we're going to double click on our length parameter. Once again, we hit this little button off to the right, brings up the formula editor. We're going to do it once again. So we start typing P, we go down to parameters, P dot length, suggests it for us, we hit enter. The result is 50, hit OK. And now both of these are using our spreadsheet parameters. But remember we've got this value here that's keeping our square centralized to the origin of the workspace. Now you might be thinking, well, surely you can just create a new parameter for that as well. Well, yes, in theory you could, but it'd be the wrong way to do it. What we need to do is make reference to the other parameters. This distance simply needs to be half of the length or half of the width. So for this one, it's the width. So we're gonna double click on this parameter. If we hit that little button once again, we can type in here parameters dot width. Now hit a space bar and do the divide sign divided by two. Notice the result has changed to 25. So this formula editor allows you to do arithmetic operations and it's extremely useful. And this is what parametric modeling is all about. We're using parameters to define other values so that our design, it almost becomes smart, right? It knows to update those values and make our lives a lot easier. Once you've set that, you can hit okay. And notice now that one's turned orange as well because it's referencing our parameters. We'll do the exact same thing for the length. So we double click, click that little button, type in, parameters dot length space divide sign divided by two hit OK. Now let's do this exact same thing for our other sketches. Remember we created a little pocket before as a circle. So if we go back into pocket, double click on the circle sketch, we set the diameter of this circle to be 12.5 millimeters. So let's go and create a parameter for that as well. So back into the spreadsheet, we're going to create a parameter called pocket diameter. So we're going to type in here pocket diameter, we're going to hit enter. Remember this was 12.5. So once again, 12.5, right click on the value, properties, display unit millimeters, alias, pocket, diameter. Okay. Now if we go back to our sketch, once again, we can grab the circle sketch, double click on that parameter, hit the little button, type in parameters, dot pocket diameter, we're going to hit OK, the value is 12.5. We've now set that up as a parameter as well. Let's update and close the sketch. And next up, we need to set a parameter for our height. Remember, we created a pad or an extrude to create the height on this. So if we go into our parameters again, we're going to set up a height. The parameter is going to be 50 millimeters because remember, we've got a cube. Right click properties. We're going to go to display unit, millimeters, alias, height. Okay. And now if we go back to the parametric modeling tab, this time it's a little bit different. We created a pad or a pocket, so we don't have a sketch to go into. Remember we created the pad and we named it cube. So if we click on this here, notice there's a table that pops up in the bottom left and it has a bunch of values in there. But what we can also do is double click on cube and it takes us straight back to this menu where we were able to enter in a height value. So once again, click on the little button. We're gonna type parameters dot height. The value is 50, hit okay, hit okay again. And we go back to our model tab. So notice that we changed our value and our design hasn't updated to what we knew it to be before. It's kind of just still in this cube. Every time you click on one of these previous actions here, like cube, pocket, fill it, it's kind of like a timeline. So you're kind of stepping back. So if we double click on pocket and we just hit okay, we've now jumped to that stage where we created a pocket. Again, we want to be to the latest stage. So we want to go to fill it, hit okay, and we're right back to where we were. To create that pocket, we had to do a cut into the cube and we can set a parameter for that as well. So if we go back to the spreadsheet, if we enter a new parameter, we're going to call it pocket cut, we're going to enter a value in there, which I believe it was 12.5. Right click properties, make sure that you set the unit to millimeters, alias for the cell. Once again, we will do pocket cut, hit OK. And there's our parameter. If we go back now to our part design workspace, we can double click on pocket. It'll let us choose that value. 
we just want to enter parameters dot pocket cut hit ok and we have our parameter now remember we need to update so we go down to fill it hit ok and that updates us back to our most recent spot the last thing we need to create a parameter for is our corner fillets and we can do that quite easily so if we go back into parameters create a new one corner fillet we're going to make this 10 millimeters right click properties display our units set the alias you always have to set the alias so we're going to do corner fillet okay come back to our model double click on the corner fillet which we could also rename so let's do that we'll right click rename corner fillet and that just makes it easier to identify which features you've got within your part tree so let's double click that once again we can click the little icon we're going to enter a value in there hit ok update our design and there we go we've set up all our parameters and you might be thinking well that was a lot of effort to go back through and change them but the mindset you have to have is that you'd be doing this as you go through a normal design. FreeCAD isn't the most user friendly. Something like this is so much easier in Fusion 360. FreeCAD does need a bit of work in my opinion in kind of speeding up the workflow. But I mean it is free and it's, it's not that bad once you get used to it. And here's the fascinating part. So now you're going to see the power of parametric modeling and why it's so awesome. So let's say we created this cube. We're not happy with the width and the length. All we have to do is come into our parameters. We can change this value. Let's make it 100. So let's double it up. Let's change the length to 100 as well. Now we're going to go back to our model workspace and it updates for us just like that by changing two values. Now if it didn't update for you, come up to the part component tree up here. We're going to right click, click on mark to recompute or hit F5 on the keyboard and that should recompute everything and update your design. And just to show you what this is doing and why it's an intelligent way to design, if we go back into our square sketch, Notice the values have updated on their own. We set the length and the width to 100 and it's kept the square centralized because we also set up these values to be half of the width and the length. So they've updated as well to 50 mil. So if we close back out of this, let's say we want to update the, the circle radius. So let's do that as well. Let's go into parameters. Let's grab the pocket diameter and let's change it to 25. Let's go back to our model workspace. And there we go, it's updated for us again. Now let's change the corner fillets. So let's go into parameters, corner fillets, let's make it 20. Enter, back to our model workspace, and just like that, it's done. It's so much easier than going into the sketch, double clicking, changing the values, going into each of these operations, changing the values. I think you can see just how powerful this is and why it's so, so important. Never cut corners always do CAD the right way. Most of the tutorials out there are not going to show you this because it takes a little bit longer and it's a little more difficult to get your head around. But if you get your head around this, you're going to be awesome at CAD. Trust me. I hope you learned something today. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I'm really enjoying making them personally because I feel like I'm making CAD a lot more accessible to more people. Fusion 360 is my favorite tool by far. But not everyone has access to it, and that's completely fine. So I'm going to keep making these videos for those of you that don't have access to things like Fusion 360. But as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos. If you want to request a tutorial, leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.